Welcome to Psychology in Design. After all our discussions about empathy and understanding the user, you're probably not surprised to learn that psychology is a big deal in UX design. Nearly everything is designed to fit humans, from pants pockets to electric cars. But that wasn't always the case. Believe it or not, it took two world wars for designers to consider what we now call the human factor. The human factor describes the range of variables humans bring to their product interactions. Before World War I, the objective was to fit the human to the machine. When planes started being used in war, that changed. Suddenly, untrained soldiers had to learn how to fly. Aviation psychology was introduced, and an attempt was made to mold the machine to fit the human. Unfortunately, in the early 1900s, the technology just wasn't good enough yet. During World War II, the sheer number of men and women needed for the war effort made it impossible to choose specific people for specific tasks. Aviation design had to consider human factors. In this case, human factors were the pilot's varying skill levels. If we were robots, some computer genius could just program us to be expert flyers but we're only human, and not everyone flying a warplane was an ace pilot. To account for this human factor, we had to adapt the plane to the pilot. And by World War II, we finally had the tech to do it. So what are some of the human factors that inform design? Here's a few of the most common ones. Impatience, limited memory, needing analogies, limited concentration, changes in need, needing motivation, prejudices, fears, making errors, and misjudgment. For an example of design that considers these factors, all you need to do is check your email. The business email shorthand, TLDR, has really caught on in the last couple years. It's an acronym you might find at the start of a very long email. A TLDR is a short, succinct summary that only gives you the email highlights you really need to know without any excess content. So what does TLDR stand for? Too long, didn't read. The email writer factors in the human tendencies of impatience, limited concentration, need for motivation, and limited memory. Not bad for four little letters. Here are psychological concepts that can help you design with the human factor in mind. Mental models are internal maps that allow humans to predict how something will work. When you face a door, your mental model tells you that the door can be opened. Once the door is opened, you'll be able to leave the room. The process of opening the door is expected to end with you being able to leave the room. A mental model breaks when you can't go through the open door because, for example, there's a solid brick wall behind it. The next psychological concept is feedback loops. Feedback loops refer to the outcome a user gets at the end of a process. For example, if you enter a dark room and flip a light switch, the room will either brighten or it won't. Positive feedback would be the light coming on, while negative feedback would be nothing happening. The more positive feedback a user gets when completing the action, the more they will expect the outcome to be positive. The same is true with negative feedback. If your user takes an action, it's important that they get some kind of confirmation that the action worked or that it didn't. In spite of all the limitations the human factors puts on UX designers, it also gives us opportunities to create even better user experiences. Sometimes a well-known brand will revert their product packaging back to the original design in order to connect to a user's sense of nostalgia. For example, a potato chip company might reissue its classic bag design from the 80s or a century-old soda company might create replicas of bottles they used decades ago. In these cases, the designer uses nostalgia to connect with users, something they couldn't use to connect with robots. When UX designers turn limitations into opportunities, the human factor isn't so limiting after all. Pretty cool, right? Coming up, we'll go through some of the psychological principles that act on the user's subconscious as they interact with a product. Thank you. 
Sometimes the human factor isn't as simple as lacking concentration or needing motivation. Human beings can be pretty complicated. We're always making associations between what we think and what we see. For example, humans usually prefer the color red over the color blue. Why? A 2005 study of the Olympic Games might give us a clue. For one-on-one -on -one combat style competitions like wrestling or boxing, Olympic rules randomly give one athlete a blue uniform and the other one a red uniform. Researchers discovered that Olympians in red won a statistically higher portion of their matches than those in blue. The study attributed these findings to the human tendency to associate the color red with dominance and aggression. Because of that association, the athletes wearing red were thought to be in a better mindset for a fight. Turns out, the right outfit really can make all the difference. But it's not just color preferences that make humans so complex. Every day, whether we know it or not, we experience examples of psychological phenomena. Let's check out some that can be especially useful to UX designers. The first psychological phenomena, von Restorff effect, or isolation effect, states that when multiple similar objects are present, the one that differs from the rest is most likely to be remembered. Think back to the childhood games you used to play. Remember those spot the difference puzzles? The puzzles were made up of images. Maybe there'd be a picture of three cows. The first two cows are white with black spots and look like pretty generic cows. They fit a young child's definition of what a cow is. But cow number three doesn't have any spots. The von Restorff effect tells us that the cow without spots, the unique cow, will be the one we remember. In UX design, this is why the call to action buttons look different from the rest of the buttons on a site or app, because we want them to stand out. In case you're not familiar, a call to action, or CTA, is a visual prompt that tells the user to take action. For example, the Start button on Google Maps is bright blue on a white background, which makes it stand out. The second psychological phenomena, serial position effect, says that when people are given a list of items, they are more likely to remember the first few and the last few, while the items in the middle tend to blur. This is why most applications and websites position the most important user actions toward the far right or far left of a top navigation bar. The third psychological phenomena, Hicks Law, states that the more options a user has, the longer it takes for them to make a decision. We can experience Hicks Law in action in the potato chip aisle of any grocery store. Rows and rows of different potato chips. Even if you narrow your choice to one brand, you still have to decide between ridge chips or kettle cooked chips, sour cream and onion flavored or barbecue flavored, and so on. The options are endless and so is the decision making process. In other words, if the number of choices increases, the time to make a decision increases in proportion. As a UXer, you might think that giving your user a lot of choices enhances their experience, but Hicks Law tells us we may be making their decisions harder. It's important for UX designers to use these different psychological principles in an ethical way. You don't want to exploit the user. You only want to encourage them. You don't want to overpower the user. You want to empower them. With a little psychology, creativity, and empathy, what starts as a limitation can end up as a benefit. Congratulations on finishing this course from the Google UX Design Certificate. You can access the full experience including job search help and start to earn your certificate by clicking on the icon or the link in the description below. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here and subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google Career Certificates.